Everybody, this is Liliana Rowanette and welcome to the new Lolita fashion series that I'm going to be making on my channel called the Tea Time Reading where I'm going to be reading old articles, essays, and maybe even more up-to-date ones and sharing my thoughts on it and what I think it means for now and I've been told that I have a very pleasant reading voice so I'm going to be reading Novella Takamoto's The Lolita Shell to start with because I really connect to that one. However, if you don't want to listen to me read and just want to hear my thoughts on it because you've read it yourself, please jump to this timestamp here. Alrighty, without further ado. The Lolita's Shell by Novella Takamoto. I don't know when this was written. A large ribbon above a frilled blouse, a wired ballerina-style skirt, a ring gotten for a dollar, Hello Kitty stationery and a gigantic stuffed bear. A Lolita shoujo resembles a fool. Don't you have anything troubling you? No. Any doubts? Nothing really. If you come across something bad, I cry. You eat as much of Hansel and Gretel's gingerbread house as you please. The whole world exists just for you. That was the fake philosophy of the Lolita circling round and round the skating rink with a vacant smile plastered on her laughing face. My teacher once said something in the midst of his biology lecture. Life always begins from something round. If you think of the shape of an egg, you will understand this. The inside, which has no power of resistance, is oriented within a sphere to escape the dangers of the outside world. It has been contrived that living creatures attack instinct to decreases both physically and mentally when faced with a round shape. In short, more emblematically stated, there's nothing wrong with saying that a round shape is cute. Let's consider the chicken. Its progression from not being able to protect itself from the outside world is an egg. Chick, and finally bird, correct. As for the chick, it tries to ensure its own bodily safety by becoming as round as it can, and that mimics the original round one in cuteness. And for humans as well, a baby, no matter what a baby it may be, also has a cute, roundish shape. And when it comes down to it, the extinct dodo bird, which is famous for being weeded out by natural law due to its inability to protect itself, also had a cute form, much like the stuffed animal on, in itself. And I thought that Lolitas tried to abide by, by that rule as well. Their big ribbons are a mimicry of a butterfly. And so they adapt to stuffed animals and go about while pretending they are incompetent dolls. That is because it's the sole way of receiving protection from the cruelty of this world. If a detective's Burberry trench coat is armor for an easily hurt soul, then inside their decorative Jane Marple fashion, Lolitas are wrapping away cells made from glass. And that is the maiden's hard-boiled eggism. The skating ring they dance upon is a thin film of ice, the subtlety between truth and fiction, and the Lolita well know that beneath the ice lies the abominable surface of reality, and that when spring comes, the ice will, make, will melt and fade away. But even still, with the cuckoo clock with the broken fiddleheads poking through, only the second hand moves. The hour and minute hand forever point to the same place. They cannot remove their skates. If they repeatedly spin faster than time, a miracle is surely bound to occur. Now waving the insignia of the lily hive with no incorrigibility meant, let us devote ourselves to our skating, if you will. So I think that is just an absolutely fascinating essay. It's one of the first essays of Nobella Takamoto's that I experienced. And honestly, without ever having read that, I was attracted to Lolita Fashion because it made me deeply, joyously happy. And when I wore it, I felt like nothing could hurt me. And that's really what it means for me, that if I dressed up and was cute, 
even if bad things happened that day, I'd be okay because I was, I felt cute. Like, even if everything goes horrible today, at least I looked good. <laughs> and that cuteness made me just feel like a safety that I hadn't felt before. And I actually shared this with my therapist in high school. Now, I wasn't nearly as into Lolita as I was now, but I always tried to aim for a cute or a vintage or cuter vintage aesthetic. And that was just also gorgeous writing. And I also felt this deep connection to the types of like what Novella Takamoto was talking about because that way of looking at the fashion is how I feel about it. I feel deeply that it is my way to protect myself from the world and to keep myself safe, but also unlike this, it also in a way feels like it empowers me to do what I want because although there are many days I feel like the bumbling maiden trying to figure out what to do the clum and being as clumsy as a shoujo anime protagonist, I still have this deep desire to be more like a competent queen um, and I'm reaching towards that and I feel that when I wear these clothes I study more in Lolita fashion which is gonna sound really funny but it's a lot easier for me to focus on my schoolwork when I'm all dressed up. I think part of it is because this isn't very conducive to like running around everywhere honestly. I think that helps a lot with it um, and it just gives me something joyous to create every morning with that I wear it. Obviously I do my best to wear Lolita as much as I can but it doesn't happen every single day because that's just not possible. Yeah, Novella Takamoto has a really interesting way of writing that is really captivating from what I read. This is a translation so also kudos to the translator. I'm not sure who translated it. Oh wait, no, it says translated by Faith, January 2006. Okay, so this was translated in 2006. I don't know what it was written. And I also think it's really interesting to kind of bring up though the fact that there is that still that reality on the other side, even though Lolita is definitely based a lot on escapism. Like, it's a lot easier to think about the fact that I need to finish my glitter accent wall than global warming. Which one's gonna make you happier to think about, obviously, but it's still important to acknowledge the reality of things that are going on and I think it's really interesting the way I get to interact with the world. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say for now. Let me double check. Oh, I will say some of this was endearing in a really funny way. Like some of it was super funny. Like it was just like, okay, the round egg is the boil the round eggism. I don't know if that got translated correctly or if that's just a quirky way of speaking. That did seem a little like out of place and how be what beautiful prose everything else was, but at the same time, it worked. And I think it was a really fun idea of like how round will we the fashion is. Maybe not all of it's super round, but a lot of it is. It's like sweet and gothic has a tendency to be that rounder shape classic. I've honestly in classic clothes, it seems like the A-line is still the most popular. And yeah. So thank you for joining me for this tea time reading. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Liliana Rowena, out.